In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you how to use Photopea. Photopea is one of the best free online photo editors available, and it's great because it is completely browser-based, which means you don't have to download anything, and it's also very, very similar to Photoshop. In fact, it's so similar that you can actually open and edit Photoshop files within Photopea as well. Now together, we're going to be creating a YouTube thumbnail from start to finish, and along the way, you're going to be learning how to add images, remove the background, add text, effects, and much, much more. Now, if you guys like what you see, be sure to hit that like button down below. And with that being said, let's get started. So the first thing you want to do is go on photop.com and I'm going to quickly be showing you how you guys can actually edit Photoshop files. So all you want to do is go to file, open, and you can open up any PSD file. So for example, this is a thumbnail that I made in Photoshop. And as you can see, I can just open it up and automatically access all of the layers and components of this file. Now we're going to be creating our YouTube thumbnail from scratch. So I'm just going to delete that. And what you wanna do is go to file and go to new. And here you're going to be able to create your own project. So the first thing you have to do is give your project a name. So I'm just going to name mine thumbnail and we're going to keep the dimensions at 1280 by 720. And you wanna make sure you have pixels selected because this is the size of YouTube thumbnails. And we're also going to make the background transparent. Now, one thing you're going to notice is that PhotoP also has a lot of templates you can use, which are on the right side. And if you're making a certain type of creative, such as a Facebook cover photo or a Instagram story, you can just select one of these presets as well, and you can quickly have your file made. But once you're done, you're just going to click on create and our file is going to open. So the first thing I'm going to do is quickly just go over the user interface and we're going to go over it at a high level because we're going to be visiting most of these tools as we're actually making our thumbnail. So on the left side, you're going to see all of your tools. So here you can do things such as move things around with the move tool, you can crop, you can add shapes. And for all of these tools where there's a arrow on the bottom right, if you click and hold, you can access additional tools and on the very right, you can see the corresponding keyboard shortcuts. So for example, if I wanted to make a rectangle, I can click on the rectangle button over here, and then I can go ahead and drag out a rectangle. But if I wanted to make a circle, I could hold down on this shape tool and then go to Eclipse and then click on it. And then I can drag out and create a circle as well. And so that is how the tools work. Now on the top over here, what you're going to see is the properties bar. So depending on the tool that you're using, what you're going to be able to do is see the corresponding properties. And so for example, right now we just made this circle. And so if we clicked on fill, we could change the fill because that is one of the properties of this circle. And right above the properties tab, we have some additional settings which we can use to modify our file, our layer and other images. So for example, under file, you can add other images and you can save your project. Editing is mostly for transforming different components, such as your circle or rectangle and rotating them. Image allows you to adjust whatever is selected with some basic edits, such as changing the hue and saturation or the color balance. The layer settings are for the layers. And then we have the filter tab, which is used to add basic filters. For example, if you wanted to blur a certain layer, you also have the view tab to change your view of the file. So for example, you can zoom out. And then the window tab is to have different things show in your actual working space. And so for example, if I clicked on character, the character tab will pop up right here. Now moving along to the right side, you're going to see two more columns and they might both be closed in like so. But if you click on the double arrows, it actually opens them up. So we're actually just going to open them up right now. And here what you're going to see is additional uh, tabs that you can edit. And so for example, right now we can click on properties and we'll see the properties of the circle that's selected. And then right underneath we have our brush settings. And then right underneath that we have our character settings for text as well as the paragraph settings. And you can change these by going into your window and selecting different ones. And then on the right side, we can see the history of the changes we made as well as some color swatches. And then right below that, we actually see our layers. And this is very important because PhotoP is a layer based editor, which means that everything that you create is made in the layer and you can manipulate these layers to create your final product. So for example, right now we have the circle layer and the rectangle layer and the circle layer is on top. 
And so if I was to, for example, go ahead and move the circle, you can see the circle is on top of the rectangle, but if I move the layer underneath, then the circle goes behind it because that is how it is in the layer settings. Now within the layers, you can also click on the I button over here to hide a layer like so. You can click on the lock button to lock a layer. So if I click on the circle and then click on lock, now I can't move the circle around because the layer is locked. But of course I can click on lock again to unlock it. And then down here, what you can also do is add some layer adjustments or click on this turning page to create a new layer. And that is a quick overview of the PhotoP interface. Now, one final place you can make edits to different layers as well as your images is by right-clicking on a certain layer and going into blending options. And here you can see additional modifications you can make to that layer, such as you know adding a color overlay or adding a gradient overlay. And if you click on any of these tabs, you can see the specific settings for those as well. And if we right click on a layer, we can also make a couple other edits, such as converting the layer to a smart object or changing the layer style, but we're going to be touching on those later. So now we are ready to start making our thumbnail. So all I'm going to do is create a new layer and move it to the bottom and then click on the other layers and delete them because we don't need them anymore. So the first thing we have to do when making our thumbnail is to add our background image. And I'll link a background image in the description, but all you wanna to do to place your image is go to file and then go down here into open and place. And then what we can do is look for the file. So mine is in this folder and it's called background. And so I'm going to click on it to add it. Now, if you want to make an image bigger, all you have to do is go to a corner point and drag it like so. Now, if you wanna maintain the proportions, you have to hold on shift when you drag. And as you can see now, it is scaling proportionately. So I'm just going to make this larger and make it a bit, a bit too big so I can show you how to crop it out. But once your image is placed, all you have to do is click on the check mark. Now say you wanted to select this again. If you click right now with the move tool selected, it's actually not letting you select your image. And if this happens to you, all you have to do is click on transform controls over here and the controls will come back whenever you select something. Now within the transform controls, what you can also do is if you go to a corner point and you go up a little bit, you can see the arrow has gone from this white straight arrow to this black arrow, which is pointing at 90 degrees. And if you click and drag now, you can also rotate your image. So I'm just going to undo that really quickly and go back over here. And so now what we wanna do is we want to crop this background because it's larger than the actual file. And to do so, all you have to do is click on the crop tool and the crop tool is right over here. So once you click on it, it'll open up the crop tool. And then all we have to do is drag it to the size of the rectangle and it'll snap into place. And then once again, we can click on the check mark and now the image is the size of the background. Now we're going to add a couple of effects to this image just so you guys know how the different effects work. So the first thing I'm going to do is slightly blur it, which isn't going to make a big difference, but if you wanted to blur an image, you can go into filter, blur, and then apply one of these. So I'm going to apply a Gaussian blur and just make it a bit blurrier and then click on okay. Of course, if you have a different kind of image, it'll show up a lot better. Now, another thing I wanna do is I want to darken this background because we're going to have text and an image on top. And so there's two ways that we can do this. The first thing we can do is we can go to the bottom layer and create a new layer and have this layer underneath. And then what we can do is we can go to the shape tool, hold down and select rectangle and actually just create a black rectangle that's going underneath this background. And we can't see it right now, but if we go back to the background layer and we change the opacity, so we make it more transparent, we can see that the image gets darker. And this is because as this image gets less transparent, the layer underneath, which is the black rectangle, starts to show even more. Now, let me just delete this rectangle and have just the background to show you guys one more way you could do this. Now, instead of making a new layer, you can also go to the background layer again, right click on it and go into the blending options and choose color overlay. And here, we can make the color overlay black like so and click on okay. And then we can take down the opacity of the color overlay. So this time the black rectangle is on top and we're making the black rectangle more transparent so that the actual background is showing through. 
So as you can see, there's many ways that you can add the same type of effect. And I'm just going to press OK, and our background is good to go. So now that we've made our background, we're going to be adding our main image, which is going to be the MacBook. Now there's actually a bunch of different ways you can add images. First of all, if you have the image open already in Google Images, you can right click, go to copy image, and then go over here, and then right click, and go to paste image, or press Control V, and it's going to paste the image for you. So I'm going to press Control Z to undo that. Or what you can do is go to File and go to Open More, and you can open from the URL of the image. But we already have it saved, so we're just going to go to Open and Place again and add our laptop. And we're just going to make it a little bit smaller, move it to the right side over here, and click on the check mark. Now the next step is to remove this white background. And this is actually really, really easy. So all you have to do is right click on the laptop and convert it to a smart object, and then right click on the laptop again and rasterize the layer. And this makes it easier for Photop to identify the components of the image so you can add additional effects such as removing the background. Now to actually remove the background, all you have to do is go to the square with the blob over here, which is the object selection tool, uh, which I don't use very often. And you wanna go down to magic wand because this is the tool we're going to be using. And once you have the magic wand selected, all you have to do is click on the white background and it highlights all of it and then just press on the delete key and the background is deleted. Now to deselect this background that doesn't exist, just press on control D and there we go. The background was removed in only a couple of seconds. Now all we have to do is add a couple more effects to this image. So I'm going to right click on the laptop and go into blending options. And here what we can do is we can actually add a drop shadow. And so going into the settings, I want there to be a shadow on this image that looks a bit more realistic. So to edit this shadow to make it more realistic, I'm going to change the distance and bring it down so it's closer to our laptop. I'm then going to increase the spread of it to about 20, as well as increase the size to about 40. And I think that looks good. And you can just eye it. And I'm going to change the opacity until it looks like it's popping out. So I think 80 is good. And then I'm gonna press on OK. And our image is added. Now before we add our text, I'm just going to go through a couple other tools that you may be using a lot in Photop. So first of all, we've already been through the Move tool and the Magic Wand tool, as well as the Crop tool, but the Eyedropper tool is great for getting a certain color. And all you have to do is click on it and then click on the color. And as you can see, it selects it as the default swatch over here. Another good tool to use is the Brush tool, which we're going to be touching on later. So next up, we have the Eraser tool. And this does exactly what it states. So if we click on the eraser tool, basically what it does is it erases whatever is selected. So right now it's erasing the laptop layer, like so, because that's the layer that's selected. Now you can also adjust the size of your eraser by adjusting the brush over here. And if you don't have this, you just go into window and then brush. And so for example, we can make this eraser a lot bigger as well as make it a lot softer. And so now if you erase, it's a much softer, larger erasing brush. And so that's how you use the eraser tool. You're also probably going to be using the text tool, which we'll be touching next. And then there is the shapes tool, which we've been over. And finally, the zoom tool. And so if you click, you can zoom in, but you can also zoom in and out by pressing control plus or by pressing control minus like so. Now, if you wanted to actually navigate through a zoomed in image, all you have to do is use your scroll wheel. So if I scroll up and down, the image goes up and down. And if I hold control and scroll, it goes from left to right. So I'm just going to press control minus to zoom out like so. And that's a quick overview of some tools that you're probably going to be using frequently. Now it's time to actually add our text. So to add the text, I'm going to create another layer. And this text is going to be on top. And then I'm going to go to the text tool right here. And we can see that the text properties have opened up over here. And so I'm going to go ahead and pick the font that I want to use. And so I'm going to be using Distant Galaxy. I'm going to make the size 150 and I'm going to make the color white like so. Click OK. I'm also going to center this text and then click on the layer to start typing. And so we're going to make the text MacBook Pro Review 2020 and then click on the check mark, go to the move tool and then just move it over here. Now this doesn't look bad, but we can definitely make it look better. 
So we're going to go and double click on the layer to select the text. And the first thing I'm going to do is highlight it all and actually go into the paragraph settings over here. And if you don't have the paragraph settings, you can go to window and then paragraph. But what we're going to do is we're actually going to change the line spacing since everything is so spread out. And so I'm going to go ahead and just go over here and make the line spacing maybe negative 60. And that looks good. And I'm also going to change the text color for the word 2020. So I'm just going to highlight it, go to the color swatch and make it a more of a yellow color like so. Click on OK. And there we go. That looks a lot better. And I'm going to click on confirm and just move it into place like so. It's a little bit too big, so I'm going to hold shift and go to a corner point and just make it a little bit smaller and then just move it so it's aligned to the center. And as you can see, it automatically shows me when it's centered with this pink line. And there we go, our text is added. Now the next thing I'm going to do is also add a shadow to this text like our MacBook. Now we can go ahead and use the blending options, but one way to do this faster is by just right clicking on the laptop layer and then going to layer style and copying it. And essentially it's copying all of the components of this layer, which in this case is the drop shadow. And then I'm gonna go ahead and go to the text layer, right click, go to layer style, go to paste, and it's pasted that shadow in only a couple of seconds, which is great. Now I'm also going to add a gradient to this text. So for this, we have to go into the blending options and go and click on gradient overlay. And here we can see we have the black to white gradient selected, and we're just going to make it a little bit less opaque. So we're going to make it only 10% transparent, and it, it, it adds this really nice shine because there's a black and white gradient on top, but it's only showing through a little bit. And then we're gonna press OK, and our text is also done now. Now quickly, one other way you can align different things is by selecting multiple layers. So for example, if I clicked on this MacBook Pro text layer, pressed Control, and clicked on the laptop layer, so both are selected, I can actually use the properties bar up here to align them in different ways, like so. But since we don't need to do that, I'm just going to undo it. I just wanted to show you guys how you can also align things very quickly. But now it's time to add some more effects to the actual thumbnail. And I think the best way this thumbnail is going to pop is if we use the brush tool to actually add a glow behind this text. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to layer three, which is right between laptop and text. And if you don't have it, you can just create a new layer and then drag it into place. And once we have this layer selected, I'm just going to go into the brush tool, which is right here. And for this brush, we're going to make it fairly large and we're going to make the heart in a zero. I guess we can still make it a bit bigger then. And we're going to make the background glow more of a pink color so everything stands out. And I'm just going to press OK. And then I'm just going to go ahead and start using the brush tool by clicking and dragging. And right now it's very pink, but what we're going to do once we're done is go to this layer and turn down the opacity like so. So it's only a slight glow. And you guys can see it, but it's not popping too much and it looks really, really nice with our thumbnail. Okay, so I think we're finally done our thumbnail because we've added the background, the image, the text, as well as all of the edits and effects. And so what we're going to do is go to File and we're going to go to Save as PSD in case we wanna edit this file later on. And it's going to save as a Photoshop file. And to export this file, we're going to go to File, Export As, and export it as a PNG, but you could also do as a JPEG. And then we're going to save it as the same dimensions. We're not going to change this and we're going to maximize the quality, click on save, and it's actually going to download the image with the same name as our file. And if we click on this, we can see that our thumbnail is done. And so that is how you use Photo P. As you can see, it's very, very easy, but also a super powerful tool. But that's about it. Hopefully this video did help you out. If it did, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. And as always, thanks for watching. My name is Iovo and I'm signing out.